Hello, hello, welcome to a new vlog. What do you think? Whoa, very nice. It's very cool, Bateman, but that's nothing. What do you think? Nice. But wait, you ain't seen nothing yet. White. Impressive. Very nice. Mm. Let's see Paul Allen's. Oh my god. So I was on TikTok last night. Something about it just like calms me down. My melatonin's flowing through my body. And I don't know what it is. I do it for like 20 minutes. It is what it is. And I got this TikTok that popped up about like something about like when you have a Jeep, which is one of my favorite cars, by the way. I like a G Wagon if we're being like super detailed. I saw this TikTok where there was like tons of ducks on the Jeep. I just opened my blinds, which I do every single morning, and there's a Jeep parked across from my apartment. And I was like, oh my God, this is a real thing. The whole windshield. I mean, there's at least 20 ducks. I don't drive, I don't have a Jeep, but I'm almost tempted to go buy some little ducks just to put on Jeeps. But I just learned it and now I'm physically seeing it in real life. I've had not a good day today. I'm gonna change my... Do you see what, Do I, you see see what I see? Shirt real quick, so. I want to be right back. Y'all, I have had such a hard day today. I've been back on my like heartbreak bullshit, like crying and just feeling super unmotivated to do anything really. Do you want to smoke some weed? Y'all, I literally just slammed my finger in a door. I was taking Twinkie Potty when I was coming back in. I don't know what I did, but yeah, now my finger is like throbbing a little bit, so that hurt. But I wanted to do some P.O. Box. The mail's here! Here's the mail that never fails. It makes me want to wag my tail. When it comes, I want a whale mail. So first thing I'm going to open. So these are some really pretty earrings from Bobby. Thank you so freaking much. So the next thing is, which there's no note to, but it's a book called Life Isn't Weight on the Bathroom Scales by Laura Rose. One long angry line later. Okay, guys, so I'm about to actually show you something super, super, like, special to me. So I'm just going to do a real quick backstory. I am the oldest of four. Don't be scared, girl. Oh, my God, this is going to suck. What is the birth order of me and my siblings? Tony, you, Jonathan, James. <laughs> no! It's, I'm the oldest. I'm older than Tony. What? So it's me, then Tony, then Jonathan, oh my then God. James. I have three younger brothers. And when I was first put into foster care, me and one of my brothers were put into foster care while the other one actually got put up for close adoption. So he was adopted and that was one of the hardest things that I've ever had to go through. So if you guys go back and you guys remember all the videos I've ever talked about when I talk about my siblings. And then my mom ended up getting pregnant again and she ended up having my baby brother. And my mom actually sent me a picture. I don't even know how she still has it, but she sent me a picture of that day. But I remember that moment and I remember that day and I remember how like wonderful it was, but also how hard it was. So in this photo, I am about 12 years old. And three years later, I actually wrote a poem. So I was 15. I remember when I was in high school, um, I went to the trailer where I used to live. <laughs> things were torn apart by the police and it was just insane. But there was a few things still left um, in my room. And one of those things was the poem that I wrote about my baby brother who I only got to meet one time. I have been able to keep that poem. You're out there under the same moon. We place our feet on the same gravel. I met you once and held you tight. I think of the sadness of my last goodbye. You looked at me with baby eyes, oblivious to your future versus mine. Our mom made the choice while I suffer the consequence. Although I saw everything we could be, our mom made the choice and set you free. A brother I will love forever, who will never love me. One, two, three, one, two, three, drink. One, two, three, one, two, three, drink. One, two, three, one, two, three, drink. Throw them back till I lose count. I'm gonna swing from the chandelier. From the chandelier. My first brother that was put up for adoption that I was really close to saved his life and everything. I still don't know where he is, but the one in that photo that I just showed you guys, he found us. A few years ago i got permission to talk about this like he's been begging me he's like mention me on your youtube mention me on your youtube and i'm like he loves me and i love him and i've never been so grateful and i can only hope that my other baby brother will 
find me one day, hopefully. Ah! He's so cute, and he looks just like our other brother, Tony, which is so crazy. Like, they look like literal twins, and I'm just like, what is life right now? Um... Okay, so right now, I'm actually kind of thinking more of like, what is it that I want to do with myself? I just feel so lost, and I just need to find myself, be myself, I don't care about what anyone says about me. I just, I don't care. I just need to be myself because the only person I got right now is myself. That's the only person I got right now. And with how lost I feel, like if I didn't even have myself, I just, I don't even know. Like, I just don't even know. Believe in yourself and don't let nobody stop you from doing what you gotta do. You gotta have faith. If you, if you can't find faith in the world, find faith in God. I, I know that I'm gaining weight. Like I actively see it in my face when I'm editing. It's hard to notice weight loss on my body, and it's also really hard to notice weight gain on my body. If you're tired of starting over, stop giving up. Like, I just can't sit around and sit and wait and wait and wait. Like, what am I waiting for? Make your dreams come true! Just do it! But, like, I keep having, like, these feelings of guilt. And I talk about guilt a lot in therapy. And it's like my therapist is trying to teach me, like, when it's okay to feel guilt, and when I'm feeling guilt for like reasons that really don't make sense. It's like when I was with Feline, say my name, say my name. Jade. like a lot of people, you know, thought she was a feeder. So it has been about four hours since I ate and I decided to look in my fridge and I realized I do have some rotisserie chicken that Feline got yesterday. She surprised me with it. And she was like, I got you a rotisserie chicken because I love rotisserie chicken. <laughs> the whole time she was so supportive and she wanted me to lose weight because she finds me beautiful. And for that, I'm forever grateful. She wanted to have a whole life with me. And obviously at this size, she was only able to have like a partial part of that. Like we couldn't hop on a plane and go to Bora Bora. I had all this support from her. She always urged me to exercise and to eat healthy and do right. And it's like, if I do that now. You know what this is? It's the world's smallest violin. If I do that now, I'm gonna feel so guilty. Because it's like, why did I do that when I was with her? This makes no sense. And I know I need to talk about it in therapy. And like, so it's like, I have this like guilt feeling. I've talked about it to Feline, obviously. Like, it's something we talked about earlier today, and it's just like, she obviously doesn't want me to feel this way, like, regardless if we're together or not. Like, if I succeed now, but we're not together. <laughs> like, it's such a weird, like, thing in my brain. Like, it just makes me feel guilty. Like, <laughs> I don't know, I hate it so much. Anyway, I'm like, subconsciously self-sabotaging myself, and I'm like, just tripping about it, and I just, I don't know, it's like the craziest feeling that I just cannot wrap my head around fully. Yes, Amberlynn, you didn't do it while you were with her. But do it while you're not with her. You don't have to be with her to do it. And you don't have to feel guilty for succeeding while not being with her. And I have to figure out, like, how I can say that and actually mean it. I'm trying to ignore it and I'm trying to push it away, but sometimes when feelings are so strong, that's, like, sometimes virtually impossible to do. And it's like, I just want to, like, do common sense. I just want to eat healthier, you know? Just take out the junk. Take out the fast food. Unless it's something super healthy, but even then it's just like... It's hard for me to choose healthier fast food options. Like, losing weight can be easy, but I, I just make it so much more difficult than it needs to be. With pen to paper, I have made a store list, so we will definitely do a grocery haul and... I don't know. And honestly, off topic, kind of off topic, I just want to say thank you guys for being like my video diary audience. I appreciate it. And I've also heard people are like, this is supposed to be, you know, Amberlynn's single era. Like she's supposed to be just like popping off. And oh, I'm not in my single era. I'm in my heartbreak era. That's not where I'm at right now. And it's like, if you can't appreciate me being vulnerable, it's like, bye. I feel like all the people that I watch, there's like some sort of connection. And I know that if there was anyone that I was watching was going through what I was going through, like my heart would go out to them. I just feel like people are expecting a lot out of me right now. It's hard for me sometimes just to get out of bed, but there's only so much distraction that I can do or journaling I can do. There's only so much of those things until it's just like it all ran out and I'm back to feeling that just like horrible wave of just sad. This is my heartbreak era for sure. And I just wish people were a little more kind. I really do. Feels like I don't know you. You don't feel the same. It feels like I've lost you Floating into space All this
the things we've been through are fading into blue. I would drive to Neptune just to love you more.